The meeting of the water commissioners is called to order on Thursday, November 16th, 2023 at 6 p.m. This meeting will be recorded. Uh, roll call. Chairman Ed Johnson, present. Commissioner John Kane, present. Rainy Brown, DPW Director, present. Christy Mayette, uh, DPW Ox Manager. Is there any public comment? Is there any public comment? Okay, seeing none, why don't we jump right to. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll go right to Bill, right? With the history yeah. of this or whatever, yeah. Randy. Yeah, so we have another I have a application for an abatement. Um, right. You want to explain? Yeah, yeah. so I, I had um, in July, I had a water leak in my in the line coming into my yard. Right, I read that. Um, before the meter. Okay. So I noticed it right away. You know, it's pretty easy in July with everything being dry and everything. And I called, I had it fixed the next day. I had um, Mark's, the, you, you, the, Mark's guys that work, the guys that work for your water department are great, right? Yeah. They came right out, turned the water off, made some recommendations, had them come out. They came out the next day, fixed it. Um, so everything was good to go. So, um, and that, like I said, that was before my meter. I got my bill. Um, now, I haven't used my irrigation all year. We had the water restriction, and then it was raining so much, there's really no, no need to water my um, grass. And I got my bill, and I think my bill, I don't know if the rates went up at all, but uh, I think my bill was about $400 higher than the previous bill. And, and I look back on all of my previous bills. Um, so I'm not really sure there's there's uh there's nothing new going on uh, on uh, past the meter okay where the consumption would go up and I I talked to you you're Christy right mm -hmm. I I talked to you on the phone and and you looked at your system um and you said there there was something about there looked like there was increased usage mm -hmm. right um I went in I looked at the meter the the reading on the meter is accurate okay so i'm i'm just not understanding where all this water went um and it i think everything's back to normal now right mm -hmm. so so i'm just perplexed at how my bill could be four hundred dollars higher than all of the other bills and uh just not sure why that is What triggered the notice? The flag in the system, Randy sent out. No, I'm David. So there was a leak in the in the service. Yes. In the in service, service after, after, right? Yeah. And after the meet. So after after the bit after the meter, yes. Okay. And I think it's coincident with the timing of the leak outside. Okay. So um, that was it was one one right after. Yeah. The if you look at from fixing the first leak and shocking the line, maybe could that have. Possibly that would maybe, you know, when cleaning the line out, some debris got into that service and it, you know, just kept the flapper open in a toilet for a little while. If you look at this page here, you can see the timing where there is continuous flow for, yeah. it looks like uh, about a 10 day period. And that's what tricked the, uh, the leak notice. There you go. Um, but as of, and you said you didn't do anything, but as of July 24th, it looks like that leak had ended. So, um, so a couple things. I, I guess my question would be, no, I, I'm not. Okay. I'm not I'm trying to show you. Yeah, I'm not doubting that. Um, I mean, when she, when she told me how to read the meter and stuff, and I went and I I read it, and it wasn't exactly what was on the bill. It was a little higher because it was you know a few days after or whatever. I'm just wondering. I have no idea where the water went. Okay. Um, and um, I have one other thing. I, you know, where did the oh where did the water go in, in in a ten day period? You guys bill every six months, right? Right. So I, I don't know my bill in, in ten days. If I mean, if you said it was a leaky toilet or something like that, that can be as much usage as one hundred and eighty days of. Yeah, it's amazing how much toilet, water toilet like can, toilet will use like yep. that. It's but raging. You talk like gallons per minute. Yeah, I yeah. I don't know. I just don't understand where the water went because there's no. There's no leaks in the house. There's nothing. 
like I said, I went down, I looked at that meter. There's no water on the floor. There's no, I, I'm just having a hard time understanding it. And then, and then the other part of it is whatever you, you bill for water. So I'm, I don't know, I'm not disputing that, you know, the water probably went through the meter, but then you get bumped up for the sewer too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, which we don't have control of that. That's the select. Yeah. Control yeah. I know. Right? Well, it, yeah. It, it so, uh, it, it just comes out of my pocketbook. You know? yeah, yeah. So your usage this six month period was forty seven thousand max. Uh -huh. Great. So right. if you look back at your last year, your last summer bill cycle, your usage was thirty eight thousand gallons. Yeah, and I was using my sprinklers last year, mm -hmm. which I didn't use this year, and I don't think I used the year before. Yeah. So because you're up by you know, ten thousand gallons. Yeah. Now, right? yeah. So so when we look at this chart here. You know, obviously, the, there's a, the minimum. Do you, you have know, what I was two years ago in the. the it wasn't. Bill? Uh, it was an estimated review. We're having an actual meeting. All right, Christy? Yeah. Two, two it, years was, ago. it was estimated. Was that what estimated, the new meters? It was estimated at 20,000. Yeah, it would be. It would have been an actual meter. Okay. But if you look at this chart here, this is that, you know, 10 day window after your leak was fixed outside the house. You can see the bars don't hit zero. But in this time frame, we estimated this total usage here. Uh, the minimum use is 7,600 gallons. So that was what we would suspect as, as actually, actually, actually what that was a leak. That somehow, so leak somehow 7, gallons. Gallons. based on this information, yeah, that's what it looks like if the leak was 7,000 gallons. Okay. I, I just, when was the initial line repaired? The date? I'm just trying to find it. It was, in, uh, it was in July. In July. Okay. I think there's a timeline on. Uh, it was on the first page. July 12th, was it? Was it? Yes, the 12th is when um, yes, I called in right away. The supervisor yeah. and then oh, right. uh, yes. Yes. Oh, in the yeah, you guys came out like within, I don't even know, half an hour or something. Yes, yeah, so it was noted on the 12th. We got the call. Right. And then on the 13th, Mark Crosby was on site. Okay, they yeah. fixed it. And then on the 17th, it so the 17th, it was kind of, yeah, that's when the leak flagged in our water system, in our system, which... But the leak started on the 12th. The 12th, yeah. At 4 p.m. was the last hour that the meter hit zero flow at the property. Well, I'm just what they were looking at. I'm going to guess that from doing that initial repair, something got jiggled, a piece of slag came off inside of the pipe and got, like we talked, maybe stuck in a flapper. It looks like seventy six hundred gallons is the the loss that we think right. mm -hmm. um, at that at that amount at whatever rate it would be charged at. What is that? Is that I'm sure you've seen this. It's a it was uh, fifty seven dollars. Fifty seven something, right? This one, number twelve. Yeah. That's yeah, fifty seven thirty. Yeah, fifty seven. Yeah, okay. So I think the data like the the data shows that seventy six hundred gallons is what he didn't use. That's what we can I think we can justify that. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And I think the the DPW has done a good job of breaking it out and really showing us that that is the right. amount of lost water. So I think if we're going to do an abatement, it should be for that amount that could have been lost. Yeah. So that $57. Yeah. Have a motion? I'll make a motion for an abatement of $57. I second that. All in favor? John K and I. Yeah, Johnson I. Good. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. sure. Um, have the water rates gone up from last summer to this summer? Yes, yes. yes. Um, what just yeah. just ballpark? What percentage? Oh, well, we go up the last tier. It's on the website. It's seven fifty per thousand gallons. So I think it might have been ten percent. Ten to like ten percent. There, there, there are three. Yeah. There are three tiers. Three tiers. Yeah, I saw that. Um, did the sewer rates go up? They did. So the 
You can no, abate the sewer amount no, through the select like sewer commission. The select. So this this is just a water. This is just it? water. Okay. So what, what tip, typically happens? Typically well, happens separate, yes. the, the the select board will take this. Take care of your abatement, for, and they'll just typically follow the, what we do. What the water commission do on the sewer. Yeah, we have no. But no, I have to do the abatement through them. Yeah, well, you well, guys take care of it. So we're going to send everything to the water commission, sewer commissioners after this yep. meeting. Yeah, uh, and they will take it up at their next meeting. Okay, and they usually follow what we do. Each of those follows okay. it, but you can certainly talk to the select board office if you want to have this. So, so I'm just trying to figure. So this is fifty seven dollars. I'm not going to hold you to this. Can you just give me if they did the same type of thing there? What would the sword go? Oh, yeah. Here, we can figure. All right, so say it's seventy dollars. Okay, so that's one twenty-seven. Sewer is ten dollars per thousand. Ten sixty-five. All right, so my bill was I think it was like four seventy-two. My previous bill, if that went up ten percent, that put me at five twenty-five. Six fifty. I still seem to be a couple hundred dollars on. I don't know. But well, you did have some increased usage in May as well. Um, in May, okay. yes, in May, and it looks like it. It was all right around. Um, the spikes are right around eight p.m. at like three hundred and forty to three hundred eighty gallons in that that ballpark. Um, um I pretty think it was pretty consistent. I have a chart here. Sure. Okay. No, I'm not disputing the, you know, the system. So that's, that's it's just that it is amazing. It's amazing how much water can be used without even realizing it. Yeah. And, you know, it it flows and it it flows at a at the same rate. You know, the, at that rate. So we okay. like we said, a leaking toilet. I don't know the specific gallons per minute, but, but it's it can, well, it's, it's yeah. a substantial amount. You know, it's yeah. over a year's time. I think what a hot tub is, uh, yeah, but the right. big east, so, but right. you know, that's only a couple hundred gallons. All right, so um, they'll just put a credit on my account. Yes. Um, so once this will go to the select board to vote on the sewer portion of it, okay. and then whatever they they make the decision on their end, usually it's exactly what the water commissioners do. do. Yep. Okay. Um, do I need to go to that meeting, or you don't have to. Okay. They they don't usually discuss it like with anybody. Yep. They, they just, just look at what we did and follow they just suit. Follow suit. Okay. Um. So then you'll receive a letter notifying you of the credit, and you can either leave it on the account to go towards your next bill. Or you can uh, write a letter to the town clerk, treasure collector's office, and request a check back. A check back, yeah. yeah. I'll just leave it there. It's because of sewer. There's no per like house. There's no flow meter. Yeah. So right. the only way they know is how much water water in, in, water out. Right. So what and we're what we're telling them is yeah. is that we think that there was a seventy six hundred gallon loss difference. Yeah. You know right. that went through the sewer that we've given you. On the water side, the incoming, yep. the abatement, right. so they should do it on the outside. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. All right, Bill. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Do you need this? No. 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 All right. Great. Right. 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 Okay, John. You re review the minutes of October's meeting. Yes, I did. I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from October nineteenth, twenty twenty-three. Second. All in favor? John K and I. Ed Johnson. I. Randy. Okay, so first item, the uh, water bills went out um, on 11-14, and they were due earlier this week. I'm sorry, they went out on about a month ago, but they were due earlier this week on 11-14. Uh, we are in the process of sending out demands for those customers that have not paid the bill yet, and there's quite a few. This bill here, 671 bills, 2,800 or so have not yet been paid, uh, over $400,000 on standing. So... That's a little concerning looking at those numbers. Yes, um, it is. <laughs> but, uh, we're going to follow those customers. Uh, item two, we are doing our uh, leak detection service uh, through Grouse Water Services. We started working in town last week and will continue probably this week and maybe it's early next week. Um, just in a few days, he's been on site so far. He flagged nine potential locations for leaks. What did he find on Peeding Hills Road when Kevin was there? By a hydrant there, so the water flowing down. It was there. a hydrant, uh, yeah. Um, Kevin was there. Past, uh, going down the hill. Just there. going down the hill. Yeah, I saw the water flow. Well. Yeah, Kevin yeah. was there. He thinks it's at uh, the hydrant. Is we, uh, the hydrant. There's a valve being in the street. Oh, okay. Well, remember, Chris, do you remember that one? 
I think it was. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Kevin Kevin suspected that there might have been a problem there, and we that was a location that um, we told them. Yeah, I just have to go by. I see the water flowing down, yeah. and they, Kevin was there, and they were there. So. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, so okay. There. So, you know what I'm saying? so um, we're going to follow up on these nine locations and any others that they come up and uh, verify. Some of these are within our infrastructure on the town side, but um, I think maybe half of these are also suspected service leaks as well. Okay. So we'll follow up on those customers if they have the service side of the curb side. Our, our back inspector, Jeff Vitovelli, is continuing to work on those inspections. Uh, we get some reports every few weeks from him. Uh, on uh, October 31st, there was a, a pretty large water brain break on Grenoble Road. Uh, we had to uh, bring in Crestview Construction help us make those repairs. So there was a fire on Maple Street that day. Yeah. Fire remember talking yeah. about that. Um, so anyways, um, just uh, kind of a result of the fire and the way the system was being used, um, the, 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 the break happened uh, at actually two locations on, on Granville Road. Right. right by the I saw, yeah. Have we implemented any training with the fire department? We did it years ago, John. When I, I, know I, I know I talked with Mike Ferraccio about it, and he had mentioned that. Well, the they drained years. the main is what happened, and then Westfield came. They put the pressure to it. and well, They, you know, the they didn't cross-connect around the pump station. That's what happened, and they sucked the main. Well, they said they they were at by Maple Street by the fire, and yeah. they, they, have a, have they, a they did cross them they, once they got once they Westfield did, got there. Yeah, yeah, they did yeah. pull from the main up on Maple Street. Mm -hmm. um, they got airbound, and then they created a vacuum or something in the pipe. And then yeah, so as Westfield put the pressure to it, and then and then Westfield they had they brought in their assistance truck. Yeah, and yeah, I passed it. They went pumping station. Yeah, they were still at a low pressure. Kevin low was pressure. there at that time, yeah. but I think. Just by that first action of drawing from the mains, created some kind of vacuum. Yeah, but aren't they supposed to connect those hydrants together? They could. Yeah, you bypass them. You Rather than one in. Because that's what happened. That's I'm thinking what happened is they. No, they did. Them. I was there. I saw they, they had it connected right, but they had already drained the main down so low, and okay. then they shut the ladder pipe down, so that caused. Well, no, but did they did they have it connected before the initial draw no. on the hydrant? No. Well, that's what sucked the main flat. Yeah. Right. They were flowing heavy water, and the chief didn't know. Yeah. And then they so called was, Westfield because they started running out of water, and Westfield didn't know. And they they did the hydrant right. I was there. I saw. Them. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We need to have training done with our fire department. Yeah, yeah we did it years ago. But that's yeah. they they've gone. I was on the fire department. Yeah. I was never trained on it. Yeah. I know it hasn't been done in the past ten years. Yeah. My oh, Ferraccio told know. me that day. He said they never did. He was a captain. Yeah. On the we fire used to department. drill on it all the time. Yeah. But they don't anymore, no. and that's the problem. And right. it just cost the town. Yep. 50 grand to fix yep. it. Yep. So they, they did make some of the changes to their operations. They're no longer going to use any of those hydrants on the Grand Railroad Road or, or Coast Hill for that matter for for drawing purposes. Well, if they're trained properly, they could, but I, that's their decision. And I think that's going to that's gonna cause a problem with a lot of people if they're not allowed to use hydrants on the road. I mean, that's going to be an issue. I think oh. we need to hold them accountable for hooking the system up right before they suck on it. Or at least like, train them on it. I mean, it's to say we can't use the. I mean, to just not use the hydrants there, and, and it seems kind of silly to have it set up like that and not be able to use it. Well, they got plenty of water with a tanker, and they got a tanker shuttle going. It's not a big, you know. It's it was we, we used to train because of the lumber yard. That's when we first started mm -hmm. drilling was when I was a lieutenant. So yeah. I, I'll tell you, things have changed quite a bit, <laughs> and the people who are on the fire department are not the same kinds of guys we had. 25 30 years ago they're not tell, you don't have to tell me i know so i'm saying tell me. We've, <laughs> i was a commissioner yeah, so i know the, i think there needs to be at least something some type of training if you want to if we want to we need to make a rule and they don't suck on the hydrants but once that gets out it's going to be an issue yeah well maybe you can reach out to the chief or whatever and yeah kevin and i had a discussion with him a few days after the fire event and that's when he you know he said us no we're going to change our procedure um well, so it's that's, on his that's shoulders. Fine, right? you know. I mean, it is an older pipeline, but I think the way it was, the manner was done, as you noted, that right. way, that I mean, the two, you know, just by increasing the water pressure, you know, five, ten pounds, or just taking away the water, is it going to cause two like right. holes in the pipe, right. you know, right. twenty feet apart? Right. And that's what happened. There, it was a. They yeah, but I don't. I don't think they just lowered it ten psi, right? I think that they had that truck because I we heard the radio calls. I've talked to other firemen they were sucking on that thing. They had a vacuum on the pipe. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking 10 PSI. We're talking 180 PSI difference. Oh, because they had the ladder pipe going. That's 1,500 gallons a minute. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't the, as long as whatever's coming out of the pump doesn't matter where it's going. Right. It's sucking as much water as it can. It well, that's what happened. Sucked a hole in that pipe. I've seen it happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's just that was the weak spot where it imploded. So. Well, that's on his shoulders. Whatever he wants to do. I mean, you know, we're gonna go to tanker shuttle. That's his. That's his. <laughs> We yeah. can't tell him how to run this operation. No, I mean, I can talk to him again. About yep. that. I mean, I, I think we, you know, like, is there any way that we could just have a valve instead of having to physically connect those two hydrants? Could there just be another pipe underneath with a valve in it that we could just bypass that pump station? Uh, I know it's a, it would be an additional cost. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, how, how it would work. I guess you just tee off both sides and then you, you keep that valve closed, normal conditions. And then if you ever wanted to drain or draw around the you just, pump you just station, open up that, uh, close the pump station up, open up that second valve, a new valve. Yeah, hey, we'll just have another talk with them to see. We can, we can look into that. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I drilled on it years ago. So, but, okay. And they're, they're going through people like crazy, especially now that it's a lot less. Yeah. volunteer in the more call yeah. full-time thing yeah and we're getting a lot of people who just don't understand water systems and anything okay okay next number five so somewhat related to number four so i did get a call from uh mr mark kunzel kunzel i don't know if that's it uh 70 grand road he called uh or he emailed me uh, a few days after that water main break and uh, i've talked to him before about low water pressure um, he's at the very top of Granville Road where pressures are designed to be low, right? 45 to 40 yep. PSI. And yeah. then, my buddy lives up there near there, yeah. So, he, he, in the first team, I made a comment that the pressure was lower than uh, it had been, you know, prior to the fire. And so, I talked to Kevin, and uh, we didn't change any water pressures in that system after the fire, they, they were the same before as they were afterwards. Um, and the reason they're, they're that low was because in the lower end of Granville Road. Um, it's high, you know, on a high end, you know, right. 80, 95 pounds. Right. So it's a balancing act. You know, you got your high and your low. You got to you do know, your best to make it work. Um, so I explained to the homeowner that, you know, really we can't increase pressure um, out of fear of having a too high of a high pressure on the low end. Right. Um, but that's kind of where that stood. He, uh, I guess he has a booster pump, but it's not working from what I gather through his emails. So. Oh, okay. I don't know the, all the details behind the booster pump. Uh, he just mentioned that it, it was the pressures were too low for the pump to just to, to work. But I have seen pumps in the market that should work at pressures that he should be getting, you know, thirty-five pound pressure range. So okay. I'm not sure. So maybe I, I the told, pressure I told is too high. You know. Maybe the pressure is already high enough that the booster pump isn't thinking it needs to boost it. Could that be a problem? I don't think so. It's uh, it's uh, there's a it's a hydromagnetic tank. Uh, uh, inside that pump station that regulates the pressure. So we can see it on our, our skater screen. It does go up. You know, oh, it's not okay. like it stays steady. Oh, no, I meant in the house. The guy had a Oh, oh in his house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wonder if maybe... I've asked, you know, I, I, I've asked some questions about his booster pump, and he says he's, you know, made clean, maintained it. But, you know, I asked, well, how long is it? When's the last time it's worked? And then I haven't gotten a response back. So <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, like, yeah. But I told him that I would bring his concern to you. Um, and that uh, you know, we'll continue to keep an eye on it, but there's nothing at this point that we can really do to change the price. Okay, you said 70, number 70, yeah. so that's yeah, just, just about the top just, of that. Oh, he, yeah. He's probably the highest house elevation yeah. on the street, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's just conscious of it now because of there right. was a walk, because what happened, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, only great applications we got 25 of them. <laughs> yeah, water bills went out, so everyone fill up. Uh, they all meet the requirements, all 25. So, can I have a motion? I will make a motion to accept all 25 elderly rate applications. I second that. All in favor? John Kane, aye. Ed Johnson, aye. Motion carries. Okay. We already did the appointment, work order summary. Yeah. Okay. Full business. Multi, multiple unit billing. It's fine. This is the policy, right? For the adoption of the multiple year. Yeah. yeah. So at our last meeting, we had talked about um, the the select board and sewer commissioners were adopting a uh, new sewer policy for billing purposes, specifically for multi-unit residential properties, uh, like a, like apartment complexes. Right. Um, and these would be apartments that have ten or more units. 
And so at this meeting, we talked about it and uh, the board decided to allow the select board sewer commissioners to kind of draft the policy, adopt it, and then we would likely just follow suit. So the select board did that a few meetings ago. And what we have here is a, is a policy that's, you know, basically a word for word from the uh, sewer policy. Um, the only thing that we added, we would recommend adding is the last sentence here. This policy will not apply to locations which have unaddressed leaks. Right. Okay. So we want to um, share the property with a, you know, history of leaks. We wouldn't want to grant them, you know, the, the benefits of this policy until those leaks were addressed. Right. But everything else is the same. Um, basically, any of these rental units would be capped at tier two. So that, you know, the, uh, whatever they used to do is at tier two. Um, and then it would be for 10 units or more. Okay. And would, so that would, that would be their kind of like their, their, their version of the elderly rate. Right. Okay. Where does it come from? So, and then where it says the, uh, for the elderly rate part, are these places like, um, says so the Southwood villages, that kind of thing like that, is that with those multi, you know, with the American in? Yeah, uh, that would likely not apply. Yeah, I think okay. South South Village wouldn't take that. Okay. No, these are so there is a we do have a list of these properties. Um, Captain Fowler Apartments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lakewood Village Apartments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apartments on Cedar Street. Cedar Street from here in Mom's house. Mom's house. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm like, not those assisted living communities. Oh, no, yeah. no, okay. no, yeah. that's gotcha. No. Just wanted to make sure that, yeah, was, yeah. Right. no, it's a good question, but no, if they don't pay the bill, sir. <laughs> okay, and I have a motion to accept that policy. I will make a motion to accept the water multi unit residential cap policy as written. Second, all in favor, John K and I, the Johnson and I, motion carries. Okay. okay. If you guys want to silence and that yeah. thing. Demand fees. Something came up uh, talking to uh, uh, Michelle Hill at the NPC office over the past couple of weeks. So, we, as you know, um, we issued demand bills for properties or for services that have gone unpaid. We're in the process of sending out demands uh, on this latest uh, bill cycle. So we were looking at the cost of the process. So we summarize that in this table here. The cost of printing the bills uh, is $1.59. And then these go out by certified mails. Right. So the total certified mail per piece would be $1.56. And then there also is, is time associated to prepare the, these pieces. The, they're done in-house. Uh, so we came up with a total cost of about $13.49 to send out each demand bill. So currently the demand cost is $10 per per um, per mailing. So we're a little short on that end. Um, the clerk's office was suggesting that we you know revisit that that fee um, to see if we can make up, you know, really we should get to just cover a cost. Right. You know, we're not right. looking at this is not a money maker, I just want to cover a cost. Um, that said, we do look at other towns and see what they do for demand fees. And uh, so Christy put it a summary down here. Agwell is a little unique. They have it's based on a percent of the fee. Well, the other communities and systems are a little more straightforward. Like Hadley's thirty dollars, Taylor is fifty, uh, Long Meadow is thirty-two, and the Sprinkle Water is forty-five dollars. We did reach out to Westfield, but we didn't get any answer there. Um, so I, I'm looking at. You know our thirteen dollar and forty nine cent cost per bill. Um, I I think it's fair to revisit that and maybe make a small adjustment. You know from the ten dollars to maybe say fifteen dollars. Uh, I was going to say fifteen dollars. And then yeah. kind of just cover our costs and then and then you know. How many demands do we have out right now? Was it here? Yeah, so that was like a ton, around, right? Oh yeah, yeah six hundred. I wish we make it like thirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the cap is 30. You can't go any higher according to the number of law at 30. Um, it's a lot. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's 671. Yeah, 670. Oh, 600. 670. Oh, 600. Oh, 60. No, 600. 71. Yeah, that, that was yesterday afternoon. Yeah, $10 is definitely not enough. I think we should go to 30, and I, we'll see a huge reduction in them after they get a demand. You know, if it won't obviously it won't be this demand, 
that we send out. No, it could it, be. It could be. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I think the next yeah. billing cycle will have a lot less demands. And what's the demand for like your property tax and stuff like that? That's got to be, oh, yeah. well, that's like 50 bucks so plus interest. That, that is $10 right now. And um, in order for them to change that, that has to go to town meeting. But, you know, there's other things that could occur if, um, you know, that does go to town meeting. They could go the other way too. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the last time that we changed um, the demand fee was back in September of 2006. So it's been a while. Yeah. It went from five to 10. And, you know, I think an adjustment is in order at least to cover the cost because the mail is not getting any cheaper. Right. No, no, no. Well, for now, while we go 25. I like that. Yeah. Go for 25 for now. I'll make a motion to increase the demand amount to $25. I second that. All in favor? John K and I. Hey, Johnson and I. Motion carries. Randy. So the last item here is uh, PFAS litigation. So we yeah. know the PFAS issue has been in the news for the past probably four or five years. Mm -hmm. Westfield had an issue. So in knock on wood, you know, we do P testing for PFAS. Uh, we have in every quarter and our levels have been low. Yeah, we've been doing um, DP is going to, so EPA, EPA came up with some new regulations, proposed regulations in, I think, March of this past year, which would lower the EPA, the federal level for PFAS. DP will respond and probably lower it to either that number or lower. We don't know where DP is going to go yet. Okay, but well, most likely lower. Oh, yeah. it could be lower. Yeah. So, so if 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 the so our our range of PFAS has been the range of two to four parts per trillion, and the EPA threshold is is uh, well, it's 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 a funky formula, but if you're under five parts per trillion, you're probably okay. Um. So, anyways. There's uh, two companies have settled law uh, or in the process of settling lawsuits through, I believe they're being filed by, well, probably a town, a water system in the, in the country. One is through 3M and the other is DuPont. So these are manufacturers uh, that have produced products, you know, containing PFAS, yeah. and they've agreed to set aside funds for a class action settlement. So the town, each town, uh, each water system, you know, has an opportunity to, to participate in this in this settlement. So there's some details um, on that here. I have reached out to the town's legal counsel for an opinion uh, and guidance on this. I have not got a response back yet. Okay. It's been actually probably a little while now, and I reached out a couple times. I was hoping to have more, uh, at least some some guidance from legal counsel for you to talk about today. Absolutely. But right. I don't, but I, I, at least I want to have it on the agenda. It's something to think about. And there are some deadlines that if we do want to join, uh, we would have to sign up, I think sometime early next year. Okay. Um, I know that some systems are signing up and some systems are too. <laughs> um, actually, I think I just read last week that I think the state of Connecticut is actually urging water systems not to sign up, or you know they think that there actually may be potential for more litigation and more mm -hmm. class action lawsuits right. down the road, right. which would these might preclude you from joining those. Yeah, right, right. So um, I guess I'm not looking for any you know, decision or direction for you today. Just something to keep on the back of your mind. Yep. And uh, we can start to talk about this in a future meetings. Yeah, until we hear from town council. And I want to hear back. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to until we hear from town council. Do we know of other local towns that have signed on to one of these? I mean, like, like Agron, Westfield, West Springfield. You know, I would not be right surprised um, if. Like, can you West find that out? But I, next I can. I can yeah. reach out to those systems and ask. Especially like Westfield, for sure. You know. Yeah, I mean they they've obviously had a, a significant piece right. of issue right. that they're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which is related to the A triple F. Right, fall March. Yeah. 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 Okay. They might be on their own whole separate. Well, it could be. With it. Yeah. Well, it could That's be. Kind yeah. Of with them. They. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You could reach out to them. I'll find out. They may be hesitant to release information, but I'll ask. So them. Maybe. I'll find they out what I can. And I'll share. If they got something going on, available. right? Sure. Yeah, they might have a class action suit going on. They don't want to disclose any information, but they ask anyway. I, will. Yeah. I can ask a couple of my contacts too in the water department, Westfield. Sure. See what they. Yeah, okay. 
right. Is that it, Randy? I think that's all I have. Yeah. Do we want to discuss the next meeting when you guys want to have that? December 31st, right? I'll be here. As long as it's Thursday. Right, Christy? Um, so the first um, for December would be the 7th and the, the second or the third uh, Thursday is the 21st. 21st, yeah. Um, I cannot make the 21st. I have my daughter's winter concert at that night. And I can't make okay. it the 7th because I'll, I'll be away deer hunting. All right. So do we want to wait till January? What do you think, Ray? We got anything big at this up? point? I'd probably say wait till January unless something I, comes up. I think uh, Dave is probably tied up um, with his daughter, yeah, in December. Yeah, like I, I said, I, I'm gone the whole week. The, the seventh, I'm gone deer hunting for the whole week. I'm gone, so I will be back till the 10th. We could either do the fourth, um, which is like the week of the holiday, um, which yeah, fourth is, is okay. We do the fourth or the 18th. Oh, the fourth is already for me. The fourth works for me. I mean, those two work, but the fourth is fine. Yeah, the fourth yeah, is fine. Okay. We'll go for the fourth okay. of January. January. Yeah. We'll let Dave know, too. Yeah, hey, is there anything else coming before the board? Seeing nothing. I have a motion for adjournment. Make a motion for adjourn. We second the motion. All in favor? John K and I. Yeah, Johnson and I. Meeting is adjourned.